is very necessary. There are some uh, rescue tools in the uh, rescue uh, tools. Yeah, yeah, rescue tools in the uh, box, uh, such as uh, uh, light, lights and uh, weapon, a small pistol, pistol, yeah, yeah. and uh, knives. And the three astronauts were about to have a two weeks experience living and working in space. That is the longest duration uh, so far for <coughs> Chinese astronauts. Yeah, the longest so mission. No. Does it make anything different? Because uh, three, we uh, three days and uh, two weeks, w will that be quite different living in space? Of course, quite different. In what way? Um, they will facing more problems uh, for the uh, microgravity environment and also the radiation in space. Of, of course, uh, the main task of this Tiangong One mission will be the study of all kind of all these kind of influence in space. Mm. And you mentioned microgravity and radiation. Uh, we understand radiation isn't a big problem for low orbit, uh, but in South Atlantic, it is a problem. Uh, the uh, the geomagnetic field is not a very so certain uniform, parts of uh, the certain Earth. area uh, where the radiation level is, is uh, in China, really high. Yeah, the, uh, uh, in the field uh, above, just above China, the magnetic field is very strong to protect the spacecraft. Mm -hmm. Well, in South Atlantic, there is a very special area. The uh, space radiation will influence the spacecraft, mm -hmm. and also, unfortunately, all the manned spacecraft will cross this area. Mm. So how did the um, International Space Station cope with radiation problems, John? Well, the, the uh, ISS actually has the ability to move into more sheltered areas in the event of a solar flare. Mm. Um, there's been a lot of talk How often about that, uh, does a solar flare happen? Well, the flares happen fairly frequently, but ones that actually influence but it's a the Earth it can be but it's a predictable. Um, we have warning, yes. There are solar observatories whose sole purpose is to keep an eye on the sun and see when a flare is happening. Uh, for, for short flights, most of the adaptation that the astronauts undergo is psychological. Mm. They become accustomed to being in space. But for flights of three weeks and longer, there's physiological adaptation that takes place, and the uh, the actual physical effects of being exposed to uh, radiation and weightlessness for long periods of time begin to mount up. Mm. What kind of effects, uh, physiological effects, that uh, well could be a pro concern? Prolonged weightlessness leads to a readjustment of your body's mechanisms for maintaining its bones. So your, begun, your bones literally begin to dissolve after mm. some time in space. Uh, bones are piezoelectric, which means that if you put stress on them, it generates electrical currents, mm. and those electrical currents stimulate the strengthening of the bones. So if you're weightless with, with zero stress on your bones, if you're not exercising, then your bones can deteriorate rapidly. So you have to be put on an exercise regimen to keep the bones stimulated, and uh, also, to, of course, to keep the muscles strong. Um, the, there's a, a exposure to radiation also, but your body does not exactly adapt to radiation. It simply accumulates damage. So there are ways that you can limit the uh, damage to the body by having uh, high concentrations of antioxidants in your diet because radiation generates strongly oxidizing uh, fragments of molecules such as hydrogen peroxide, hydroperoxyl radical, which attack DNA. Mm. Uh, but do we have data that exposure to long time radiation can cause some uh, bi biological change to a human being, to an ca uh, astronaut? We, we have definite yeah. evidence that, that, uh, of long term radiation exposure being dangerous, yes. The it can detect antimatter and dark matter uh, in the International Space Station. Well, about a two-kilometer ride, uh, the bus carrying the three astronauts uh, have approached the launch complex. Well, that's uh, where they will lift off from the Earth and 
had on the journey to the international uh, to the uh, China's first the prototype of space lab that's Tiangong One. This is the Jiu Chuan Satellite Launch Center. It is a launch center that is uh, one of the biggest and also that is used uh, the most among all the space launch complexes. Uh, this is a camera view taken from uh, about five kilometers away from the launch pad where Shenzhou 9 will be carried by Long March 2F rocket into space. The rocket cannot be seen. Uh, no, because it's uh, wrapped mm. in the uh, uh, umbilical tower. Mm. The rotary arms and the rotary platform still hold the launch vehicle and provide a very convenient right. environment for this launch vehicle now. Mm. So it's, it's, it's shielded by the tower itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Much better than yeah. those used for the space shuttle and the uh, Soyuz spaceship. Uh, this is the bus carrying astronauts. Uh, they already arrived at the launch pad. Uh, after some final check, they will be heading towards the platform that will carry them inside uh, the spacecraft. It looks that the weather in Jiuquan is pretty cooperative. Yeah, that's fine. Weather is ideal mm. for the launch. And <coughs> before they head into the cabin, do they have any tests on the astronauts? Mm, yes. They will take a lift to the uh, spacecraft and uh, then they will clean and uh, then will go into the spacecraft. Jinghai Kong will be the last one on board the Shenzhou 9 because mm. he sit in because the Because of the seat middle. arrangement. Uh, he sit in the middle. Mm. Be sure. We will finish the mission. This is the Commander in Chief of China's manned space program, General Chang Wanquan, uh, at the side of the launch complex saying goodbye and sending off the astronauts into the lift and they will take them to the spacecraft.